And a very good morning to you. It's Friday the 28th of June 2013. A warm welcome along to today's United Kingdom talk, boys and girls. Uh, just a reminder, uh, if you're watching us live, then you can join in. Now, how do you know if you're watching us live or, or it's a recording? Simply look at your clock. If it's just gone 10.30 on Friday the 28th of June 2013, UK time, then you are indeed with us live and you can join in live. Uh, uh, by three different methods, either by email. The, actually, could someone send us um, an email? Because I just want to check it's working. I don't think it was working last Friday. I get this dreadful feeling that we, we that nothing was working last Friday properly uh, on the email thing. So the email is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. All right, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. There's a Skype if you have Skype, and it is the most wonderful free video and audio and thing ever. Skype is wonderful. I've had it for years. Get it for free. Skype, if you've got Skype, my username is, all one word, Chris Reardon. There's a few Chris Reardons in the, in the world. I got in first. Yes, there are. I know there are other Chris Probably not as mad as me. There are actually normal Chris Reardons in the world. I know that sounds hard to believe, but apparently there is normal Chris Reardons in the world. All right. My Skype username is Chris Reardon, C-H-R-I-S-R-E-A-R-D-O-N. That's the Skype in, totally free. Or there is a local London phone number. My local London number is 20 8133 Six, <laughs> six, three, five, eight. He says, rushing now to check that I've given up the number right. Hang on a minute. Is that the right number? Oh, I've had it written down here somewhere. <gasps> oh, it's gone missing. Oh, no. Don't want to give out the wrong number. Six, three, five, eight. Oh, one, eight. What is it? Oh, gold. Hang on. Oh, no. Eight, one, double, three. Hang on a minute. Hang on. Hang on. Oh, uh. Uh, 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 uh. One minute, one minute, let me just check that rings. Oh, that's it, yes. Yes. O two O O two O eight one double three six three five eight is the phone number, okay? O two O eight one double three six three five eight. They're the various methods you can contact us if you're with us live. It's just coming up to twenty five minutes to eleven on Friday the twenty eighth of uh, June two thousand and um, thirteen. You'll also notice now and again. My little um, uh, eyes darting from side to side as I keep an, a, a, an eye on everything that's going on. I do try and keep an eye on everything that's going on. Uh, indeed, Terry's just sent us a test email, which has arrived. On oh, Terry. Terry, you've gone straight into the junk email folder. Why could that be, dear? Oh, Terry. Terry H, you've gone straight to the junk. It's good job I saw that go in there. I wonder how many other things go in there then. Hang on, I think I can, how can I do this? Uh, junk email, add sender the safe send. There we are, I've add, added you to my safe senders list, so that won't happen again. Sorry about that, Terry. You've gone to the, you are, apparently, according to my email system, you are junk. Isn't that a dreadful thing to say, dear? Has anyone called you that before? I bet they haven't. I've been called a few names before in my time. Bucktooth was one of them. Because <laughs> at school I used to have sticking out teeth. I think I was Bugs Bunny. What's up, duck? Can I have a carrot? I, can't, I don't like eating raw carrots, do you? People say you can buy them from McDonald's now, can't you? Bags of carrots. And sit there and munch on those while all, everyone around you is having a chocolate donut. Or a blueberry muffin. <gasps> oh, I tell you what, Waitrose do the most beautiful blueberry muffins. You ever had one in there? <gasps> they are to die for. Blueberry muffins. Uh, you bite into them, as well as having a blueberry, they, they put this, like, blueberry... Um, I don't know what it was. Blueberry sort of liquid in the middle. They must inject it in there. 
and you bite into it and it all oozes and dribbles down your chin. We love it, Terry. But don't worry, Terry, I have now added you to my safe senders list. So you won't, will no longer become a piece of junk. Thank you. Good morning to lovely Wendy as well, who sends an email as requested. Everything is working fine. Thank you, Wendy. Which means you can join in by email as well, as people always don't want to uh, always download new programs or, or, or ring up or things like that. Then you can still use the email. You'll have to use the email if you're... Um... Oh, I want to blow my nose. No tissue. Oh, no. You think I've got everything ready before I've sat in? I do. I come in here about I'll pass twenty past nine, and I'm moving papers around and doing things on the computer and this that, and the other, and I always forget something. But never mind. Uh, yes, if you're watching a recording of the show or listening to a recording of the show, then you can of course join in by email. Email address is Chris at United Kingdom Talk dot co dot uk. Now talking of recordings. There are uh, some quite often get often asked the question, quite often get often asked the question. OK, and that's a new way of saying it. Um, I don't really have time to watch. Well, you can just download the audio and then you get your little MP3 player or iPhone, iPhone 5. Thank you very much. iPhone 5. People have been, been slagging off the iPhone 5 this week, haven't they? Oh, Samsung Galaxy. Oh, it's faster. Oh, it's faster. Does the normal person, i.e. you and me, do we actually notice slight changes in speeds of things? I don't think we do, do we? It's only the geeks. It's only the, the people totally into... And I don't think that's a derog derogatory term, do you? Geeks. I don't think it's derogatory at all, um, but certainly geeks would notice. They sit, I reckon they sit there with all these different phones. Uh, right, let's do it. Oh, no, that one's faster. Quickly, let's slag off the iPhone 5. I've been very, very happy with my iPhone 5. Uh, I had an iPhone 4 before that. This is iPhone 5. Very happy with it. Nothing goes wrong. It just works. That's all you can ask for for a piece of equipment, isn't it? It just works. I have a new piece of equipment this week as well. I'll tell you about it in the coming hours. I intend to be here for at least 10 hours today. Yes, I have one, only one cup of tea. That's it. I'm hoping that my best mate's going to come up as well later on, Ron, because he's back. he's been on holiday in Vegas. Oh, yes. Vegas. So I'm hoping he's going to pop in today. Yeah, nothing wrong with the iPhone 5. They sit there. Oh, all this one, oh, all oh, this one is 3.3 of a nanosecond quicker than the iPhone 5. That means the iPhone 5 is crap now. We must slag it off. It was a bit like that, isn't it? Anyway, uh, yes, often people ask if they can just get the audio version. Yes, you can. Then you put it on your iPhone and plug your little earphones in like that and then listen to me on the go. Perhaps you're in a car or so you drive a car. And you're thinking, oh, you know, you're flicking around. Because, please, be honest, there's not a lot of good talk stations um, on uh, the radio across the country. Uh, in London, we're very lucky to have LBC. I like most of the people on LBC. Uh, there's a couple of people I can't stand. Uh, Christo, who's on at the weekends, uh, very late at night, would put the, <laughs> the worst shift of the week, which is like um, one till six on a Saturday and a Friday night. So Friday night would be Saturday morning. So he's on there. I don't listen to him. And Ian Dow has got the most boring voice ever. And he's on during the week between 4pm and 8pm. Can't stand his voice. Absolutely can't stand his voice. Um, but everyone else on there I quite like. Not keen on the woman in the afternoon. What's her name? Oh, uh, she's a bit full of herself. Oh... Well, there's two, actually. There's Petri and someone else. Don't like their names. But everyone else I like. I like, love Steve Allen, my favourite presenter. Uh, Nick Ferrari, quite like him. James O'Brien, like him. Uh, fantastic Clive Ball, who's on in the evening. Love him. Uh, Duncan, someone else, who's on... Uh, overnights during the weekdays, he's great as well. So I like all those. Is there anyone... Ever? I hope I haven't left anyone out here. Not that they watch this. They haven't got time to watch this. Oh, no, dear. No, no, no. It's just you and me watching this. OK, so if you just want the audio part of the programme, then you can always get that by going to unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. All right, unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. 
www.thepodcast.co.uk. At the top there, it tells you what to do. Right click and download the show onto your iPhone or iPad or or other MP3 player, anything like that. Uh, Terry H says, the iPhone is amazing. Have you seen the new software due to launch in September? Looks very camp. What new? Oh, yes, the new software. Yes, the new operating system. But I don't like it when they change things too much, Terry. I have recently been forced, forced against my will, to go on to Windows 8. But actually, it's not been too bad. I'll tell you about that a little bit later on. So I'm on... <coughs> <coughs> the laptop is now on Windows 8, Terry. All right, As what's the weather like up there today? We've got a bit of drizzle today, which I'm pleased about. There is a reason I'm pleased about it. Again, tell you about it later on. We don't want to get, we don't want to talk too quickly about everything. Otherwise, there'd be nothing to look forward to, would there? You know, sometimes people say to me, why don't you tell us at the beginning of the show what's going to be in it? Uh, well, I quite like the element of surprise. I don't like all these um, menus that all the TV programmes and the radio now talk about. They, they, they finish the hour and then they go, right, coming up in the next hour. Well, I don't want to know. I want you to surprise me. Surprise me. You know, it's like walking into my bedroom every night from work. I open the door and I'm surprised there's no one there again. But there you go. You know, that's how it is. If I knew there was going to be no one in there then it wouldn't be a surprise. be even more of a surprise if there was actually anyone in there. There's no, been no one in my bed now for about three years. Isn't that awful? Don't care. No one wants me. That's it. Nobody wants me. Only the cat. And she sits next to me, right next to, right, I mean, right next to my face. Here she is. And she's purring a little light off and it sends me to sleep. And then when I wake up in the morning, she's turned around and she's the other way. A little bit further down the bed, but probably because my arms whoa, what's up, whoa, whoa, move over all the time. She doesn't want to slap in the face, little Katie. And then when I wake up, she's usually curled up asleep, still down there. If I touch her, she makes her jump. <laughs> I'm very naughty like that. I touch her <laughs> as I wake up and she goes like that. And she, her head darts up like that. And then she, she likes that. She likes that. <laughs> I'll open the door later on today, and guess what? Surprise! There's no one in the bedroom. Oh, well. <laughs> Sorry, old state me. Good morning to Marge, who says, Good morning, bright eyes. Good morning, Marge. Hope you're feeling better, Marge. You weren't too well, were you? Last week, I noticed on your Facebook, as you eaten something bad? Oh, what did you eat that was bad? That's one thing was up with us vegetarians, incidentally, boys and girls. OK, rarely, rare, very, very rarely do we get food poisoning. Doesn't happen. You get food poisoning from those nasty dead animals you keep eating, dear. Nasty dead animals. And, 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 and something else that was in the Daily Express. This is actually last week. I'd save this to talk about uh, on the show last week. And we actually never got around to it. Um, in the Daily Express last Tuesday, it was two Tuesdays ago, diabetes risk in red meat. Now, don't turn it off. Don't turn me off. You, what do you mean you don't want to hear about it? Yes, you do. I might be saving your life here, or at least a life where you have to keep sticking needles into, your, into yourselves. You know, my heart goes out to diabetes people who, is that how you say diabetes? People who have to inject themselves. Oh, I couldn't do that, dear. Well, you'd have to, wouldn't you, if you want to stay alive. Never to get a bit of flesh. Where do where do the injections go? I think it's in your stomach. Is it? Is, am I right in thinking that? You get a bit of, and put the needle in, and oh God, no, no. Anyway, it says um, regularly eating red meat can dramatically raise the danger of getting diabetes. Says a new says a new study. People who increase their intake of steaks, hamburgers, or sausages. Um, uh, 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 by a small portion over the time, small portion, okay. Now, who can have a small portion? I can't have a small portion, dear. Oh no, no. My mate, he always says I do too. My my dinners are too big, but you know, so what? You know, it's, it's not like I'm snacking in between all the all the meals. I don't, you know, have a meal and then t half an hour later, oh, I'll have a bag of crisps, or I'll have a bar of chocolate. No, I just have the meals generally. Okay. Now and again, there might be the odd bag of crisps. I can't lie to you, boys and girls. Try as I might, I cannot lie. 
I cannot, unlike Ricky and Mario on The Only Way is Essex, I cannot lie to you. I have to tell the truth. I have to tell the truth. Anyway, um, it rings, it raises your risk of diabetes by as much as 48%, say scientists. Just half a serving more a day, the equivalent of an extra half a hamburger or another slice of bacon, can add to the chances of developing type 2 diabetes. This was in last week's Daily Express. By cutting out the same amount of meat can lower the likelihood by at least 14%. So there we are. Another reason, boys and girls. Another reason not to eat meat and to eat basically well you you call it meat don't you you call, i call it dead animals i do i'm sorry yeah don't don't say i don't want it. you're like my sister you are i don't want to know you try and tell her the truth i don't want to know she says and she has another bacon sandwich you know i used to eat all that i used to have bacon sandwiches in the morning and things like that i did till i looked into it Till I looked into the welfare of these creatures, I can't eat that. Oh, look, there's another. There's a picture here of the Queen. Oh, she looks beautiful. This is in the Daily Express, and uh, she's she's got all her all her regalia on the Queen and Prince Philip. This, as I say, this is a week old. This is. Oh, she looks beautiful. Did you see the? Um, is, I don't know if there's anything else in this paper that I was going to tell you about today. Hang on a minute. Let's have a quick look. No. Uh, Oh, that's it. That was, that was the other thing I was going to do in there. Signs of getting old. We, we'll do that later. <coughs> we'll do that later. Let me throw that bit of paper away in my waste paper basket, ready for recycling. What was I just saying to you then? Hey? Oh, yes, yes. Bacon sandwiches and things. I used to have all that. Yes, tomato sauce on it. Not not good. Not not anymore. Uh, Terry Yates says, The weather in Leeds is horrible. It's raining and a bit cold. Had to turn on the heating. Are, are you joking? Turn on the heating? At the end of June? You can't do it. Terry, put a bloody... I bet you're walking... I bet you're watching this with no top on in front of the computer or something like that, aren't you? Take the heating off. Turn the heating off and put a jumper on. There's all these people walking around naked all the time. You know, it's no good, is it? My mate's like that, my mate and his boyfriend. They walk around the house, they got no top on. Ow, I'm cold. Ow, I'm cold. That's why, because you've got no top on, dear. Put something on, turn it. You're the one paying the bills. Yeah. You're the one paying the bills, Terry. It's up to you, my friend, mate. If you want to turn your heating on, it's up to you. I can, I can hear the meter going around from here in your ass. God's sake. <laughs> Never heard anything like it. Heating on at this time of day. Now, where's my other bit of paper? There it is. Other things to do. Uh, Mill uh, Marge says, I'm still having a bit of issues. Oh, Marge. Are you still ill? I may have to go to the doctor. It's nothing to do with animals. Oh, good. I'm glad it's, of course it's nothing to do. Why would it be anything to do with animals, Marge? You're an animal lover. And Ma anim Marge has all these different animals come into her garden. She's in Oklahoma, USA. Raccoons and things like that. Um... She says, I have gluten problems and allergens to wheat, rice uh, and white bread. I haven't been eating meat for a long time. White bread. Chris, I'm not your sister. I'm into eating healthy. I listen to all your health advice and you're the one that helped me to stop eating meat. It's almost been a month now since I ate meat. Good girl. Do you feel any better for it? Or is it like just in your head that the fact that you're not eating animals anymore? I'm, I'm interested to know. Marge. I wonder if you do. Do you fancy a chat on the phone today, Marge? I don't know if you've got time, darling. Don't forget, you can call in, boys and girls, uh, using the Skype username, Chris Reardon, C-H-R-I-S-R-E-A-R-D-O-N. That's my Skype username, all one word, Chris Reardon, or by phone, 020, London, local London number, 020 8133 8133 six three five eight and i just have to keep an eye on that screen there because that's where all the um the calls kind of flash up on a, uh, a a screen next to me over there um my feet now you may remember last week we had to do it could, could only be an hour show because i had a, a foot appointment at the doctor 
Do you remember this? No, no, at the hospital. I was at the hospital. Oh, wait till you hear this, dear. Wait till you hear this. Because I have a specialist doctor that I go and see every few months, right? Uh, don't ask what it's for. I just go and see him every few months. Every few, I have to go and see him every month. And he's the one that arranged this appointment at this hospital, okay? So, um... He, uh, uh, so I got to, I left, I, I finished the show, bang on 11.30, wasn't it? Uh, the time I left the house and got the recording up and everything else was about 45 minutes. So I left, left my house about up past, tw tw quarter past 12. I first of all went over to my mate's house to feed his cats because he's been on holiday in Vegas. He came back yesterday. Quite frankly, he was glad to come back, to be honest, uh, because it was getting rather hot over there. I think he said... On the last, on yesterday, was it yesterday? Yeah, yesterday or the day before, they had 37 degrees. So what, what's that in Fahrenheit? 37. So it's, is it times two and add 30, isn't it? 37. So it's 67. 74, 84, 9. So that would be 104 at 37. 104, which I think is, um, is a uh, fairly, uh, uncomfortable. Thank you, Marge. I've just got you on hold at the moment, Marge. I'll be with you in a second. Um, but apparently Vegas have a heat wave heading their way. And it's going to be 40... Was it 44 or 46 degrees? I think he said it was going to be in Vegas. Which, I mean, is, is just too much. It really is. There's no way... I could, I could, I, I don't think I, I'd be able to leave the room. It's just too much. You know, it's like walking into an oven. So he was, he was quite pleased to be back, actually. So I fed the cats. Um, uh, and then I left, left there at about, oh, it was about quarter to one. Now, the journey time is one hour. I gave it nearly two. OK, so my appointment was for 2.30, left at quarter to one and then went, oh, no, no, just awful traffic going all the way into London and to the Hampstead area, which is where I had to go. And uh, I, I eventually walked into this clinic at 29 minutes past two. Because you know, one thing I hate being late, I can't stand being late for things. I really, really hate being late. So I walked up. Hello there. Uh, just come to see the bone person. Oh, uh, what's that about then? I thought it's my feet. Do you mean the osteo, whatever it was? He said, yeah, well, they're not here today. I said, well, they must be. At that point, my doctor come walking down. Hello, Chris, what are you doing here today? I said, well, I'm here for my feet appointment. She, he said, well, they're not here today. They're all away on a course. I said, well, no one's told me. He said, oh, I'm really sorry. This is not here today. And you've come a long way, haven't you? I said, well, yes. He said, oh, I'm really sorry. I said, well, it's not your fault. And I was so annoyed, really annoyed. But, you know, I didn't show It's not their fault, the people on the desk. Um, so I had to come back home. And by the time I got home, it was like 20 to 5. What a bloody waste of a day. I hate wasting days like that. You know, I absolutely hate wasting days. But what, what can you do? And, 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 and that was it, really. That was it. So... I said to him, I said, you know, before before I left the hospital, I said, um, I'm, I'm going to go down to my local doctors and see if he can do it there. He said, oh, are you sure? They're very good here. I said, Look, I said, you know, this is taking me on a Friday and coming home on a Friday from there in the afternoon, because the only times they can do these appointments are between 2.30 and 4.30 on a Friday. OK. And of course, all the early ones were gone for months. The next available appointment was for the for the beginning of august and meanwhile my feet are hurting they, they hurt on the sides not quite sure what's wrong anyway so i made another appointment for my doctor on tuesday i went to see them tuesday um i, I, I oh it gets better right so they told me eleven thirty. so i got there at eleven thirty, and i noticed this new screen this new video screen thing on a wall OK, so I said, um, oh, I've come to uh, come to do my uh, 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 appointment for the doctor today, please. And oh, sorry, I just turned something up there. And um, she says, oh, you've got to check in on the screen. Oh, OK, so I put this on. Oh, patient not found. Surprise, surprise. 
Patient not found. Did it again. Patient not found. I thought, you can't find me. Oh, she said, let me come round and do it for you. And I thought, well, you don't need to do that. I've done it properly. She did it. Ah, it's patient not found. So let me check up on the records. Oh, you've missed your appointment. I said, well, it's 11.30. She says, no, it's 11 o'clock. I said, well, that's not what I was told. She said, well, it must, you must have been because we don't have an 11.30 appointment. They told me 11.30. They absolutely told me 11.30. And I'm getting a little bit fed up with this. People saying, you know, that you you were told something when you know damn well you weren't. So I've recently got a new app for my iPhone. Check this out. Check this out, boys and girls. Right, it's called Tape Call. Tape Call. Now, the free version allows you a 30-second thing. So I'm going to... Try that for a while and see how it works. And if you want the full version, it's... For... I can't even bloody well see that. Hang on a minute. I can't... <laughs> Going blind here. Let me just... It's so small, the text on here. 6.99. If you want the full version, it's 6.99. And the idea is you can tape your phone conversations. So no longer can people say, no, we definitely told you. If you've got it taped... That's it. Because I'm getting fed up with that. People telling me that they told me one thing. Anyway, as it turns out, she went and saw the doctor and they said, oh, uh, uh, pleased to tell you, he, she will be able to see you. So I went in there and she told me exactly the same as what my specialist doctor told me down the hospital and that she would send off a letter and they'd be in contact with me and uh, would arrange a visit to this, this foot place. And where is it? In Bracknell. So it's like 10 minutes away from my house. So that'd be a lot better. Oh, so, you know, just having some tea. So there we are. What a complete and utter waste of time uh, that trip to the hospital was last Friday. And the, the, so that's my foot news, I'm afraid. My feet still hurt. And they, they hurt on the sides, you see, um, between the, um, uh, the, the small toe... Between the small toe and the foot arch is where the problem is. She did say what it was. I can't remember. I think it involved the word plankton. <laughs> plankton or something like that. Which I thought was something in the sea. I don't know. Uh, good morning, Marge, in Oklahoma. How are you today? <laughs> All right. Oh, Marge, why can't I hear you? Oh, hello. That's unusual. I can usually hear people. Uh, uh, I'm hearing myself. Oh, Marge, are you there? Yeah. Hello? Um, am I plugged in? Actually. I'm hearing myself. Say something, Marge. Hello? Oh, right. Well, it's me, because I can see your little lights flashing up there. I'm, I'm hearing myself. Hang on a minute, Marge. Oh, it's my socket. One minute. I've got a dodgy <laughs> socket here, Marge. One second, darling. Sorry. Uh, uh. Hello. Hang on, Marge. Yes. Stay there, darling. I can hear, I can see your little lights flashing. I just can't hear you in my ear. There we are. Gotcha. Hello, Marge. Hello. Good morning. You hear me? I can now. It's all my fault. Sorry, Marge. Okay, I was hearing myself. I thought, well... <laughs> Yeah, I can see uh, you have a little, me... couple of little lights flashing in front of me that tells me whether the sound's uh -huh. going out or not. I know, so, so I know it was me. How are you? All right. You had me laughing there about the plankton. <laughs> the pl I, couldn't talk, I couldn't talk anyway. <laughs> it, it's plank something. Or, I'm sure it was plank something or other. I can't quite remember yeah. exactly what it was now, she said. Maybe maybe we have a... Um, Maybe we have a, uh, a, 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 uh... You need your feet scraped like a, they do the boats. A, the... a foot person or someone like that. You know, they, they scrape that plankton off them boats, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and it's on the end of my foot. Maybe I picked this up years ago when I was walking on a beach or something like that. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <coughs> Hang on, let me... T I'm just going to type in foot, foot problems. Foot problems... P L A N and see what see if anything comes up. No. You know you're talking about recording people. We you, here it's illegal to record conversations unless you tell them that you're recording them. Oh, I don't know if that's um. I don't know what the case is here. It might be the same case here. In well, which case, yeah. I'll be. Uh, I'm ha I'll happily tell them that. 
I'll happily yeah. tell them that yeah. I'm um, uh, recording people. I found it, Marge. It's... Uh, oh, is it? I've lost it again. Oh, plantar fasciitis. Huh. Plantar... I told you it was plankton or something. Plantar... Experts say... Here, look, look, at, look at this. <laughs> experts say as many as 75% of us have constant or frequent foot pain. Uh, mm -hmm. If your work requires you to stand... That's me. Yep. Or walk a lot. That's me. You're even more likely to suffer from painful feet. Uh, I so, still say, you know, I still say those those feet things that like Walmart's got those where you can stand on this pedestal and it takes your feet and it gives you a pad. It measures it with science, some sort of scan, like a scanner. Yeah. And, and you can buy those <clears throat> pads that, that uh, make your feet better. Oh, I don't know. In a way, balanced. You that, know. Sa that sounds about right to me. Actually, uh, do you know on, on on Amazon they have something fifteen yeah. pounds nine nine pound forty five. But I, I've already um, had a word with uh, a chiropodist who told me that I would need insoles. But yeah. they must be made for me. He said, please don't buy them off a shelf because they it, it will be even... Well, this is what this does. It takes a scan of your foot and right. you'll show, it'll show red spots. It has a like a, a x-ray looking thing. Yeah. And then they give you a code. Of course, it might have to be specially made. But they give you a code of whichever pad that, that works for your foot. Yeah. And you put, you know, and you put it, it's an insole that goes inside of your shoe. I said, well, it might be cheaper than, you know, if you have to pay for a lot of, you know, yeah, special yeah. made stuff. You could try them, well, you know. I, it's <laughs> we, I can go to the doctor. The doctor's going to yeah. send me to the foot place. And yeah. because it's NHS, they will, if if necessary, I will get one of those and it won't cost me anything. We've got oh, a wonderful, okay. wonderful health system here, as, as I've told you about before there. Oh, um, even the stuff that you have to, yes, to, to but, use they, that's free too? Yes. Oh, Okay. But the um, uh, it's everything, anything to do with health except dentists, except oh. your teeth. And even then, uh, if I go to NHS, they, we have NHS dentists and private mm -hmm. dentists. If you could, um, uh, if you go to an NHS dentist, you pay a set fee. OK, oh. let me give you an example. Uh, a checkup at an NHS dentist is th 18 pounds. At a private dentist, it's about 40 so well. it's a huge difference. So it's all subsidised, but it works very well here, and uh, I might as well go and uh, get me. F I, w I would like it sorted. The only thing is, the doctor told me, you know, we they can sort it out, but there's no quick fix for this one. It can take months. What can you? I just do? never been much of a doctor person. You know, I'm always into nature and naturalist. <coughs> Yes, I know. You know, I'd, I would go to a, a doctor that's into herbal, you know, healing yeah. and. Um, this here, what I've got right now, is just, of course, it's, it's, it's allergies, you know, to, to yes. foods and things. But I've, I'm, I've got a list. When I get a food that triggers one of these episodes, I mark it off. Don't eat that, you know. And I was doing really well. I, I was, I was, you know, on that V8, uh, they have a vegetable fruit uh, drink, you know. Oh, I'm a, great, I'm, a great believe, I'm a great believer in vegetables and fruit eating. Oh, yeah, uh -huh. yeah, yeah. Well, I uh, I'm not I'm limited in you know my income's not that great. I can't afford to buy a bunch of things to juicing. Yeah. I mean, you'd have to buy a lot of oh, stuff to I make about it. All those so. juices. I heard that with with these juices. The trouble is, people make these juices out of fruit, this, that, and the other, and they pile this fruit in, and then they yeah. make this glass of juice. Now. There's an enormous amount of calories in some of these juice things, right? Yeah. Because when you think about it, say you was making um, orange juice. Say you're making that. Now, how many oranges is that going to take? Four? Five? Oh, Something oh like God. that, yeah? Right. Well, you wouldn't eat four or five oranges in a go, would you? No. And people don't realise that. So when yeah. you make a juice, you are actually consuming a lot more of the item, whatever it be, whether it be um, oranges, strawberries, there's another one, uh, anything like that. You're consuming like four or five times as much as you would do if you were just eating. You know, it's funny. I think when I was drinking this juice, I was actually losing weight. And I noticed that I didn't drink maybe a half of a cup of, of juice. You know, if I, yeah. if I get those little let down feelings because of my blood sugar you know i'm not yes. diabetic but i mean hypoglycemia i just go drink a little bit of that 
and I noticed it stopped my appetite and, and it gave me energy to keep going, you oh, know? Oh, yeah, yeah. And I mean, so, it, so although, it, although, it gave me a lift, you know. Although there's, a, there's more sugar in a glass than it would be in a normal thing, I still think you're better off drinking, say, a glass of orange juice than you are, would be a glass of uh, Coke or, or some sort of oh, other yeah. fizzy drinks with them. Um, well, see, that's another thing. The <clears throat> Coke and, and things was killing me. I, Dr. Pepper, I never realized it was it – was, it, I was actually – pushing around a, a walker i couldn't hardly stand up my my joints just locked down and you put and that, put that was, down to the fizzy drinks <laughs> because of acid in the coke and coffee right. and after i stopped that i was having them episodes where i couldn't even hardly walk yeah you know <laughs> so there's something going on here and joint every joint in my body was inflamed i mean did, it was so did, painful uh, my hands swelled up, my legs swelled up, you know. Did the doctor tell you that was that was actually due to the fizzy drinks, did he? I, t I say I don't go to doctors. <laughs> I may I, I may give up and go if I don't if I don't get better, but every time I'm doing everything I'm doing seems to be helping. But like yesterday I made a mistake and I bought some a banana. Yeah. Uh strawberry V8. Banana, the same bananas v and strawberries. Juice. And I had a severe allergic reaction to what? it, and oh, and I was sick, sick what? all did, day. Did you, <laughs> but did, I'm, I'm a little better this morning. I'm okay. Did you say you bought bananas and strawberries? What did you say you bought then? No, it's V8, V8 juice. What they I don't know what, in, what is that? V8 is a is a brand of juice. It's a hundred percent juice in right. a bottle. It's a in right. a plastic bottle. Pre <clears> you can buy. It's made by Campbell Soup. Yeah. Campbell Summit Company, and it's already mixed up, but it's 100% juice, okay? Yeah, yeah. But I've been I've been drinking what they call peach. Right. Peach, uh, something else, and, and I forget, mm. but I don't have any reaction to that. Uh, but I thought, uh, oh, I want to try a little, you know, flavoring. So I bought the cranberry something up, something anyway, and then they got the strawberry and banana. And I read up on bananas. Yeah. Bananas are high glycemic, means high blood sugar. And there can be uh, allergens to bananas. I said, well, I know I have yeah, eaten bananas it, it, in could, the past. Could, if, could, it be, could it be the, the quantity of it? Like when you're buying a juice, again, yeah. you, you'd be drinking three or four bananas. Whereas, of course, yeah. if you just yeah. had one banana, then you're... Do you see what I mean? You're just having one. Yeah. I, I, I have always said everything in moderation, you know. You're right about the bananas because... If I eat a banana, it has to be a certain degree of ripeness. Right. If I eat it green, yeah. I throw it up. <laughs> if I eat it ripe, it, it, it affects my blood sugar. It not, yeah. it, I mean, I just like go to sleep. I can't wake up. You know, F and that's, that's, it's not scary, but it's irritating yes. uh, that you have to watch your food so closely like that, you know. Fagash Lil, Fagash Lil says you can get cans of V8 in this country. Pa yeah. Apparently, we can it, get I, we can get cans of V8 here. Okay, so. like I said, the the Campbell Soup Company makes it. Oh, you're breaking up there, Marge. Try that again, Marge. What happened? Oh, you're, you're going a little bit, a little, it, that, that a bit. Okay. Let me see if i got something running. Have you got something out? Are you looking at something else, are you? No. Uh, I've got to say good morning to Dean as well. Dean's in London, listening for the first time, or watching for the first time. Good morning, Dean. He's off to work soon, I believe. I don't see anything running. That's it. I've got you now. You're okay now. Go on. <clears throat> I closed a program. Okay. Uh, which I'm, my internet, you know how it is, I'm on an antenna. <laughs> yeah. So it's happened to go quite a bit of a direction. Worry not, my to... dear, worry not. Carry on, we must plow oh, on, I, plow I, I on. never worry. Heck, I'm not a worry <sighs> person. I mean, but but for me, it's like, do you remember the cans we used to take, cut yes. the hole in and put the string? Yes, yes, that's my, yes. That's my internet. <laughs> 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 oh, we've all done it. We didn't use cans as children. We used uh, yogurt pots, I think it was. Yogurt pots. Yogurt pots. With a little hole in the bottom and a we, piece of string. And it worked. We, and, of course, as a child, uh, I had these wonderful ideas. You know, I've given all my friends a yogurt yeah. pot and have a string <coughs> coming from my house. 
<laughs> to all the other houses, which of course would never have worked because the string's going to be tight, isn't it? Yeah. Well, it's our yogurt be, here always in a paper, you know, plastic paper, so that wouldn't work. <laughs> <laughs> it don't come in cans. <laughs> yogurt in a can? Oh, there's, goodness. There's lots of people that do things with bits of string and, and ropes and tying things up and whatever, I think, Marge. It really is, dude. Yeah. Okay. Hey, I'm looking at your picture on Skype here. Is that wise? Oh, I don't... It, it, yeah, go I'm on. looking at it, and on my screen, you, you sure you don't wear makeup? I mean, you look. I like do not wear makeup. You, no, you I have. If if you I, have if a I beautiful ever, if eye, I ever, like, get, like you got <laughs> eyeliner, and I have. I mean, I'm not criticizing it. I think. No, you're not the first one you know, to men, say that. Men have the most beautiful eyelashes. You ever notice that? You're not better the, than women. You're not the first one to say that. Lots of people have said that. If I ever get a high definition camera, I will have to start wearing makeup because the lines. <laughs> you can't so, actually so see <laughs> that the beauty of a standard definition camera is that it blends all the lines into each other, you know. No, no, you no, don't really do that. Them. Do you know you earned every wrinkle, every gray hair you ever made in your life? Don't be hiding it. I oh. look at them as tro trophies. <laughs> I know, I know people that have had injections in their face and they look strange. The oh one, God! The worst yeah. one, the worst one ever, is that Sylve uh, Sylvester Stallone's mother, oh, whatever man, her name yeah. was. <clears throat> that woman, I mean, it, it looks like a cat woman. You ever seen just, her? Yeah, like, yeah, just her looks. And awful. their lips look like somebody slapped them with a with a baseball bat yeah, in their mouth yeah, or something. Yeah. They're all there's, swollen. You there's know, there's this there's this awful program, American program I saw the other day. Um, housewives of something. I, I, oh, what was it called now? But anyway, and they all got fat lips, and and you can see they've all had these injections on them, and they just look like freaks. You know, women are having their butts lifted now. Oh, d didn't Jennifer Lopez have that? Did yeah. You know that? What in the world is with that? <laughs> your butt sticking up and your lips sticking out? <laughs> See, does, I don't know. does this does this stuff actually last, or do you have to keep having it? What I happens? I was wonder what it looks like when you're 90 years old. Can you well, imagine? that's the thing, isn't it? Does it all fall down at that point? Yeah. And, and you have to do you have to have it done again, or is there a limit to how many times you can have these things done? I don't know. Well, it's I like tattoos, you know. We, if you got we have tattoos a, all over your body. We have how, a very, how do those tattoos look when you're 100? Yeah. <laughs> you make it that long. We have a very I mean, famous God. singer, uh, Cliff Richard, who's a singer. And he had something done to his eyes, and um, he's over 70 now, and he says he, he, he always regrets ever having anything done. Yeah. Cliff Richard, that is. Mm. Well, I can imagine, you know, little light things, maybe, you know, it's not, it's your body, it's your temple, you can decorate anything you want to, well, but to me, yeah, no, it probably is, we have to see it, the other people have to see it, <laughs> you know, to, to, actually, you're looking, to actually inject stuff into your face, it, it can't be right, can it? Yeah, it's I don't not, know if it's, it's not well. Doing yeah, any good. I don't know. Can I just, it's, let me it's just give out the right. e let me just give out the email address. Don't forget, boys and girls, if you want to join in, perhaps you're watching a recording of this. You can join in by email. The email address is Chris at UnitedKingdomTalk.co.uk. Any comments on anything we're talking about today, please feel free to join in. Chris at UnitedKingdomTalk.co.uk is the email address. The Skype, Skype in uh, username is Chris Reardon, all one word, C H R I S. R E A R D O N, okay? That's the Skype in, Chris Reardon. Or there's a local London phone number, 020 8133 Local London number, 020 8133 Just a word, if you're going to call in, you won't be able to call in while someone else is already talking to me because there's only the one uh, sort of thing. There's not like a bank of people here waiting to take calls and put you on hold. It's me. That's it. Just me sitting there, and I have to push the button. So if your call flashes up, then I'll, I will see it, and I'll say, I'll come back to you in a minute, or please call back in a minute, all right? Go on, Marge, you were saying <clears throat> about oh, the injections in your face. Would you, would you ever have a facelift or something like that, do you think? I'd have a whole body lift, would I you? think. Would you really? <laughs> no, but, I, I don't think so. You know, mm. have you ever seen that Venus of Wildendorf? You no. know what I'm talking about? No, no. You don't know the Venus of Wildenorf. It's an ancient, ancient uh, goddess uh, statue mm, right. that they found. It's uh, way where, back where when they this? used to worship the goddess. Where? 
they used to worship the goddess thousands and thousands, millions of years ago. Where did they the goddess? Where did they find this statue? Oh, don't give. I can't give you details, okay. but it's called the Venus of Wildendorf. Right. Okay. That you can Google it. See that picture? That's me. <laughs> I'm gonna have a Google quick look at picture. that. Hang on a minute. Let's see if we can find that. V- <laughs> Venus of Venus of Wildendorf. Uh, W-I-L-D-E-N-D-O-R-F. I I said that every time I think about my body, you know, I'm thinking. Venus oh, of well, Oh my just, God! Look at we, it. <laughs> Hang on a minute, I, could, I, I might be able to show that somehow. Can we I said, people to... used to worship women like me. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I don't do Venus, I'll, I'll, I'll see if I can, I don't know if I'll be able to bring that up. Let's have a quick try. The Venus, <laughs> I'm a bit worried you look like that, Marge. I'm not sure that I want to meet you now at some point. Uh, where's that going? Is it that one there? It's more of me to love, Chris. Eh? <laughs> more no. of me to love, see? <laughs> <laughs> Let me see if I can find that there. Newly got... There it is. That's the one. Okay. There we are. This is what Marge reckon she looks like. <laughs> which is very worrying. <laughs> <laughs> 47, Now, 18. come on. That people are lovable, too. <laughs> uh, no, I can't. <laughs> Oh, Marge, I think I, I, I might go along with In fact, now that I've seen that picture, I'm going to send you the money to have that body lift. I'm going to send you the money. You can't walk around yeah, looking like that, I girl. lift it up to the high school fall back down on my head. <laughs> I need a whole review. <laughs> oh, it's awful. Awful. Uh, uh, now, come on. There's a lot of heavy people that's not awful. Now, if you're not too healthy, there are some big women that are healthy. No oh, joke. I've, I've seen, you, know. you see them in the States. Actually, you don't yeah. see them in New York. When I was in New York in February, you don't see big people. In Florida, you do. Loads of them in Florida. Not in New York. Um, I tend to think, you know, if, if, if people are happy, then fine. But, you know, be aware of the health issues. Yeah, overweight. Yeah, yeah, really. I'm just kidding about the oh, no, 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 I'm, no. Not not, I'm not that you know, big. Not really. overweight. Just, it, overweight doesn't yeah. really bother me. I am. More I than, am overweight. I was 175 yeah. or 165 pounds for yeah. years, and that's my weight. Yeah, that's my weight. And then I've gained like 40 mm. pounds over right. the last year. Well, my and, weight is, uh, that you, is for me is is a lot of my problems too. So okay. I know I'm overweight. <laughs> well, my weight has, has 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 at last stabilized. You know, it had been going up and up and up. Yeah, I'm watching your old videos, and to me, you look better now. Well, really? uh, it, it stabilized. You, you, were, you were too skinny in part of that. You know, to it me, it stabilized at just over 13 stone, which is a, about 182 pounds, I think. Well, that's not bad. I mean, how so, tall on, are you? 13 stone, hang on, times, and there's 14 pounds in a stone. Yeah, about, a, it's like 13 stone dot 04, so it's about 183 pounds. And it's, uh-huh. it's stabilised it, and it's been like that now for uh, a couple of months. It's stopped going yeah. up. Yeah, stopped going up completely. And you're five, how, how tall are you? And oh, um, five feet. Nine, eight, eight, nine. Well, yeah. that's like I said. To me, you know, you know. But think about it. You can be a hundred and eighty-five pounds of fat. Yeah. Or you can be a hundred and eighty-five pounds of muscle. It yeah. doesn't really matter yeah. on the weight yeah. part if yeah. you're if you're physically. You know, you know what I'm saying. It's, it weighs the same. Yes, yes, I know exactly what you mean. Yeah, <laughs> it, yeah. You know, people going about getting on the scale. That that mm-hmm. don't really matter if you're physically fit. Yeah, you can still yeah. be, uh, you know, that weight. There, there is, there I mean, is, there I is, I is a thing. I could be 200-pound woman that's pure muscle. Yeah. <laughs> oh, know? yeah, you can be fat and fit. You can be fat and fit. You can be. I'm not feeling too fit this week. I haven't managed to go swimming this week uh, because I've been yeah. running around um, uh, 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 feeding Ronnie's cat while he's been in, in uh, Vegas and things like that. Oh, Apparently, yeah. I've been bought a gadget as a gift. Uh oh! <laughs> so I'm, I'm looking. Well, you need a boyfriend. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to receiving. Well, not... We don't quite know what the gadget is, Marge. <laughs> you know, women and their gadgets. <laughs> <laughs> but 
I'm not quite sure what it is, but I'm quite excited, uh, wondering what uh, this gadget is going to be. That's what happens when you live alone. You buy gadgets. Oh, I love gadgets. <laughs> I love them. I don't like. And I like learning to use them, though. That's the trouble. <laughs> I don't like learning to use them. So, so you know, that's how it is, really. I'm, I'm sorry, I get tickled. About, I get my mind thinks of things. I get tickled too easily. <laughs> <laughs> Marge, it's always a pleasure to chat to you, my darling. Well, I was feeling kind of bad, down, but you lift me up and made my day, so i got to go back to sleep. You lift me up, <laughs> ladder, and climb on highest mountains. and make me stand. Da, 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 da. <laughs> go and sing it for me. How's it go? Oh, this is, oh that was a really I like song. I like the bit in that where the oh, key changes. Who, who, who originally... Make me stand. By faith on heaven's table and a higher plan than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. <laughs> no, that's not the song I was thinking about. That's what I said. <laughs> oh, it's You that's Raise Me you Up. Were... <laughs> you Raise Me Up. Do you know that one? You raise me up okay. to stand <laughs> on highest mountains. You raise me up. I think Westlife did it. There might have been someone before. that one. Yeah, you look know. it up on YouTube. Not yet. Now, when I've finished it, I know finished. that song, but I don't know the the words. Yeah, um, Westlife. Anyway. Westlife. You oh, raised me up. Oh, I was going to say I wrote it on uh, your wet Facebook, but uh, thinking <clears throat> my mom, you know, when I couldn't get up in the morning, she'd go, "Wake up, Jake up, days of brick and the beans in the pot and the cold cakes bacon, chickies crowing for day." Can you <laughs> imagine that? When your mom comes <laughs> in your house, you I think you could have go, your own. That, mu- I, I reckon you could have that. you could have your own music show. I think, Marge. Oh really? <laughs> I'd be better when my voice isn't full I of do, allergies. And <laughs> I do think my, you could have your own music show. <sighs> okay, well, hon, I better go back to sleep. I got to go back, go to work in about a couple hours now. All right, Marge. Uh, sweet dreams. Get, then at least another hour of rest. Yep. And uh, you have a great day. I've really had an enjoyable morning. You too. <clears throat> Good night, oh, Marge. How's Katie? How, before I go, how's Katie doing? Oh, Katie's very well. She's actually asleep on the bed next door at the moment. Uh, oh, yes. She sleeps she a spends, lot of bed. Yeah, she sleeps a lot. She's very old now, yeah. bless her. But, yeah. um, yes, she follows me around the house a lot, and uh, she's always, like, with me. I'm and... glad she's still doing good. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I put my cat to sleep, that 22-year-old I was telling you about. Yeah, she told me, yeah. That, that yeah. was okay. I mean, it was her time, you know. She was she was having a lot of problems, so. But anyway, okay, I'll talk to you hopefully again someday. And uh, i get off here and let somebody else chat away. Goodbye from oh, we'll Oklahoma. Be, we'll be lucky to get another call in, I think. See you, Marge. Bye-bye, darling. Bye. There we are. Goodbye from Oklahoma. Oklahoma are in the house. That means there is now a line free. If you want to call in, please feel free to do so. You can Skype in. Skype username, all one word, Chris Reardon, C-H-R-I-S-R-E-A-R-D-O-N. Or indeed, um, you can use the phone, 020-8133-6358, 020-8133-6358. So I was telling you... um, about the feet business and all that so um i'm just waiting now to hear from the clinic in uh, bracknell where i live bracknell is in uh, uh, berkshire here in the united kingdom and they'll tell me um uh, uh, when to go in and visit and hopefully they will sort me out over the uh, next few months perhaps in soles in the feet and all that and as i say we, we have a wonderful health system here called the uh, nhs and it won't cost me a penny not a pretty penny um other health news <coughs> excuse me <coughs> I've had to, I've had to make an appointment for my asthma review. Yeah, it's supposed to have an asthma ath, aths, asthma review um, every year. So I've made an appointment, and that's for next Friday, and that's at one o'clock. So again, next Friday's show will be uh, not as not well. Won't be able to do it as long as I want. You know. Because really, today, I could sit here um, doing as long as I want today. You know, we could sit here for hours. Although I have got to go to town later uh, to go to the opticians. I'll tell you about that in a minute. So I've got an asthma review next um, uh, Friday. Um, (laughs) Fagash Lil says, you're safe. I'm too fragile to call today. Oh, poor Lil. Are you being fragile? Why are you being fragile? If only you gave up some of that drink that you do. Oh, she's she's pissed all of the time. 
I'm sorry. Fag Ashley is pissed most of the... Oh, I quit. Have you heard her when she calls in? <gasps> God, you know, you wonder what she's going to say next, to be honest. Hello, Chris. How are you? <laughs> and she... And sometimes she burps. Oh, it's not you that burps. That's Ross Patzelt, isn't it? He? he burps on his... Ross Patzelt does a radio show and he burps while he's doing the radio show. Isn't it disgusting? It really is disgusting. Never hear me burp unless one slips out accidentally. Don't you hate that? Yeah, you're walking up. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> it happens more often as you get older. Have you found that, ladies? You know, you can be walking along and perhaps suddenly... <clears throat> oh, excuse me. Or at the other end, you know, you're walking you know, in a supermarket. <clears throat> oh. <laughs> you look around to see if anyone else has noticed, don't you? Huh? So, Fag Fa Ash Lil won't be calling in today. I'm disappointed, Lil. Disappointed. Um, <clears throat> yes, so that's, that's my asthma review. And I had an eye test. I had an eye test yesterday. And I need to change my glasses. I actually got a pair of glasses here. Okay, these are the ones, um, really, that I, I use. Uh, they, are, they actually make you look... <laughs> Bigger, but still blurry. So they're the wrong ones now. Um, so I'm getting a new, new set of glasses. Uh, I'm actually getting... Uh, I went to Specsavers. They do buy one, get one free. And <coughs> while I was in the um, uh, opticians... So he done these reading glasses, and he says, oh, yes, you need new ones of those. OK, fair enough. He did the old thing, you know, where they put that thing on your head, and they put in these different lenses, don't they? I'd say, oh, is that, is that one better? Or is that one better? You say, number one. Is that better? Or is that better? Number two. Is that better? Or is that better? Number two. And it goes on like that, doesn't it? Uh, can you see the red, the red, the red screen? Or the green screen better? Or the green one, please. I say, can you see the red screen or the green screen? The red one, please. Uh, the red one, or, oh, oh, they're about the same. And once you say it's about the same, then it's done. OK, and they do each eye separately and all that business. And I hate that thing in the eye place when they put you on that machine, it puffs the air into your eye. Don't you hate that? You're sitting there and you say, OK, and this air blast of air comes at your eye. I really hate that. I really, really hate that. <clears throat> and um, I mentioned to him that um, I do sometimes use my glasses to drive uh, because I've noticed sometimes when I'm driving along, it's like. It's like I'm not actually there. Do you, do you see what I mean? And I put the glasses on, and hey, presto, I'm back in the room. Have you, does that, uh, do you know what I mean by that? So you're driving along, you're thinking, oh, I don't, don't feel, I kind of feel like I'm, 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 I'm in a cloud or something like that. And I put these on. And as soon as I put the glasses on, it's better, but still a bit blue. He says, oh, he says, well, he says, um, you won't need, you don't need them, but I can do you some driving glasses as well. He said, try this. And he gave me these things, put that on. He said, OK, I'm going to do the same as with the other one. He'd go, is that better or is that better? And we ended up with these long, long vision glasses and it did make everything sharper. So I've ordered a pair of those as well. Um, <clears throat> so... Uh, I got, got then, then someone comes in and takes you to the glasses section. And what I ended up doing was ordering a pair of reading glasses and sunglass reading glasses and a pair of driving glasses and driving, um, and driving sunglasses. And the driving ones have got this anti-reflective thing on. <clears throat> so that when these idiots are coming at you know, with a full head beam on, it's supposed to be a lot better. So I don't know what that's like. So I've got to go down there uh, after I finish the show today and done, done the recording and sent that up online. Uh, I'm going down to the optician to hand over my money. Quite, quite expect £200 for that lot. That's not bad, I suppose. £50 for each pair, is it? But, you know, that, that, that's, that's what you need. That's, that's not free on the NHS, that. Although I did get a cheaper eye test. I think they were printing a voucher with the eye test. Oh, I can collect vouchers. Oh, yes. Do you? Do you do vouchers? <clears throat> All the time, dear. Oh, yes. Yeah, I soon spot a voucher in a newspaper. Don't you worry about that, dear. And it was a £5 voucher to have your eye tested, eyes tested. So I cut that out and took that in, so I got that for fiver. So I've got to go down there later and ha hand over £200 for four lots of uh, glasses. 
All right. Um, Fagash Leo says, it was my baby boy's birthday yesterday. Information for others. Mixing vodka, cognac and cheap lager is bad for you. Well, stop doing it then, Fagash Leo. You're the one drinking these cocktails of bad drinks, dear. You must stop drinking all this. You, you must stop it. Oh, poor Lil. She is actually a registered alcoholic. I don't know if you knew that. I, don't, I wouldn't normally share that information with people. Fagash Lil is a re registered alcoholic. She is. She's in, in one of those AA places. She goes like sometimes to these Alcoholics Anonymous places five or six times a day. She goes there, you know, you go in and say, would you like to stand up, Fagash Lil, and tell us? And she's got a can of lager in her hand while she's telling her alcoholic stories. It's dreadful, isn't it? Terrible. <laughs> Terrible how people are like that. She says, by the way, my baby is now 21 and doesn't drink, sensible lad. Well, thank God he's not following his mother's example. Sitting there, she's probably smoking at the moment. Have you heard Fagash Lil when she calls in? Hello, Chris. <laughs> As another fag is taken in her mouth. Don't forget you can join in by email. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk Doesn't matter when you're listening or watching this show. You can send in an email at any time. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk If you're watching or listening to the show live, you can join in live. Um, you know it's live if it's just coming up to 25 to 12 on Friday the 28th of June 2013. If that's the time, UK time where you are now, you are with us live, you can join in by using Skype. Skype username is all one word, Chris Reardon, C-H-R-I-S-R-E-A-R-D-O-N, or by local London phone number 020 8133 6358 020 8133 6358 Well, as well as going to the uh, iPlace, um, I thought... It's time to make a return to the dentist. Not the private dentist I've been going to, because quite honestly, it was costing an arm and a leg. I haven't been to the dentist for 18 months, because the last two times I went, he said I needed um, uh, fillings, which he did. And on both occasions, the sensitivity, you know, when you've gone in, and you know, oh, I don't think there's anything wrong, or you need a filling. But, you know, I wasn't in pain. It didn't feel like there was anything wrong. Why do I need a filling? Oh, the, the one in there is starting to break down. You need a filling. OK, so you go along with it, you know. You hand over your 50, because you're 50 quid a filling. I said something like that in a private dentist. Um, and he does the filling. And then it was just mega, mega sensitive afterwards. You couldn't almost touch the tooth. You couldn't eat on that side. Because you'd get this pain go up into your head. And it went on for weeks. Anyway, eventually it, it sorted itself out. And then uh, uh, six months later, he did a filling in another tooth. Okay? And again, afterwards, it became extremely sensitive. Now, I'm not saying... I, I'm not actually saying that the dentist had done anything wrong. I don't think he did. It's probably just me, but it it just put me off going to this dentist, especially as, you know, I didn't think there was anything. Oh, I've got my wire twisted. Hang on a minute. Where's that got stuck? Anyway, it, especially as when I went in, it didn't feel like there was anything wrong. You see what I mean? So I stopped going and I haven't been to the dentist for about 18 months. In that time, this this particular dentist, I won't say who it was or anything like that. This particular dentist is very... um. Uh, uh, they keep ringing you up. They ring you up, and I would see the call come up on the phone. <clears throat> sometimes they send their number, and sometimes it comes up as a blocked call. And they harass you. They may not see it as harassment, but the phone is constant. They are constantly trying to ring you to get this bloody appointment out of you because they, they want the money you know they want the money that's what it is and i got fed up with it being badgered all the time so i stopped answering the phone this is one of the reasons i stopped answering the phone because <clears throat> you know uh, if you re regular listeners of the show you'll know um i turned off all my answer phones a while ago and stopped responding to phone numbers i didn't recognize and all with withheld 
or blocked numbers. I haven't just just haven't answered them at all. Last week, I changed my home phone number. I now have a new home phone number. At a stroke, all the unwanted phone calls have stopped. So I'm now answering my home phone again. And I have only given out my number to, like, very, very close people. Family, a couple of friends, that's it. I've now given out my number to everyone that I want to give it out to. My, my home phone, there might be a couple of people I've left off. My home phone number only goes out to a few people. No longer does that bloody phone ring with people. Not the mobile, though. I keep the same mobile number. And I'd already decided to um, go to the dentist. <clears throat> so after I'd had my eyes tested, I went to this um, national health dentist in Bracknell Crossways. And I went up there and I thought, oh, do I really want to go in here or not? You know, but I did. I did go in there eventually. And um, I went upstairs and I said, I don't know if I've been here before, because I remember going upstairs to a dentist somewhere in Bracknell ages and ages ago. Um, and she looked me up on the system. And she said, no, you haven't been here before. I said, OK, fair enough. And um, uh Uh, oh, I was going to say, <laughs> I've lost the plot now. Oh, yes. So I couldn't remember. Going. So do you take NHS dentist? So they said, yes. All oh, right. OK, then. Uh, fair enough. Um, could you sign me up? Yes, please. So let me just let me just get more comfortable on my seat here. So I signed up and filled out the relevant form. And she said, OK, the next appointment is for end of July. So that's OK. So I made the appointment and I will now go to this new dentist. You see? Um, so that was that, and blow me down, as I came out of there, and by the way, the checkup is £18, right? She said, do you want to see the hygienist as well? I said, well, I'll need them cleaned as well, won't I? She said, no, no, she said that that would be done as part of, of the, um, of the visit to the dentist, right? So for £18, in an NHS dentist, you get your teeth checked and you also get your teeth cleaned with the descal and the polish for 18 pounds now in the private dentist you don't get that you get the the checkup which is about 35 pounds and then you get the visit to the hygienist for the cleaning which is 39 pounds so you can see the huge amount of difference there is between going to see it's not just a few quid huge amount of difference between going to see a normal dentist an nhs dentist and a private dentist huge huge difference there so that's it so i'm going to the nhs dentist now as i came out of the dentist will blow me down my phone's rang blocked call and couldn't believe it, it was the private... Oh, hello, is that Mr Reardon? I thought I recognised that bloody voice. And I says, who's that, please? Oh, it's um, so-and-so dental surgeon here. I thought, Christ, 18 months I haven't been there and they are still badgering me for a bloody appointment. I was pissed off with it now. It's too much. It's too much. Take the bloody hint. I might well have rung them in a few months. So I'll go and see it and rung them. But it's because they've badgered me and pestered me for this phone call. It's not it's not a case of just picking up the phone just for a reminder. It, that is not the case at all. It's not. You are being badgered for these bloody appointments. So uh, I said to him, I said, oh, I said, oh, no, it's not Mr. Reardon. <clears throat> I says, I took this phone over a few days ago and getting a little bit fed up with these calls. Oh, I'm very sorry, sir. Um, so um, th you've just taken over this phone. Have you? I said, that's right. She said, I'll remove you from the system. Thank you very much. Put the phone down. Hopefully that'll be the end of it. Don't badger me. I get annoyed when I'm badgered. It's like, you know, when you order something. Or you make an inquiry for something. And then they want your phone number so they can keep bloody well ringing you up and pestering. I don't put my phone number on there anymore. I don't. 
or don't answer it. The mobile phone, I still don't answer unknown calls, usually blocked and withheld. Don't answer them. Numbers I don't know. Because people get them on nerves. It might be someone trying to sell me something. I, I inquired the other day about a new boiler online and put the phone number in. My God, the phone just kept ringing. Different people offering me bloody boilers. You know, I don't want to talk to them. Tell me online how much is it going to cost. And that's it. So I've made an appointment for the dentist. How fabulous is that? At last, after all this time. Now we might have, I've just realised someone's coming up for dinner. I'm supposed to be meeting my friend for dinner today. So I've just got to make a quick phone call. I've just got to make a quick phone call to Ron to stop him coming up here because my other friend is coming to dinner, I believe. So one second, let me just ring uh, Ron. And, um... Let's see. No, he's not, um... Right, you don't worry about coming out because I've um, got something wrong. Uh, my mate's coming up for dinner today, Richard. All right. <clears throat> I'll come over when I fit. Eh? Oh, well, no, I'll come to you when I finish because I don't know how long we're going to be. I expect we go to Pizza Hut. We usually go to Pizza Hut when he comes over. You know, Richard? Jewish boy. One with a bald head. Lovely bloke. All right. So I'll ring you when I've finished. Thank you. Bye-bye. Are you not watching the show? Are you not with me this morning? I'm very disappointed. Oh. Of course I'm still talking. We've only been on for an hour and a quarter. What do you mean, those poor people? Uh, it says here, six million. At one point, there were ten million viewers today, so we've lost four. Which isn't good, really, is it? <laughs> It's not six, it says six viewers, so that must mean six million. Thank you. Bye-bye. Goodbye. <laughs> there we are, that should, because uh, he was going to turn up, wasn't he, Ron? I oh, forgot all about that, oh, God. So my friend Richard's coming around, we'll probably go to Pizza Rat or something like that, a nice pizza. Well, actually, there's another pizza place, that's, that they, the pizzas are better. Because if I like the Pizza Hut ones, I don't know, they've got a bit stodgy. You know, they seem to have got a bit stodgy, so not good for you, really, are they, pizzas? There's another, there's a Frankie, Frankie and Benny's, they do pizzas as well, which is quite nice. I've no idea what time Richard's going to be here, but um, <clears throat> there we are. Uh, Wendy says, uh, last night I had, here, yeah, Wendy says, um, hello, Wendy, says, last night I had a guy call me five times about reviewing my pension. In the end, I put the phone down on him and his phone again this morning while well, I lost it. you got a right old earful. Yeah, I can't stand it, Wendy. I can't stand being badgered and pestered on my, te on my private telephone. I've even got a message, so I've put the answer phone back on the house phone because it should now be one of... 15 people only who ever ring that phone and the message says hello this is chris sorry i can't be with you please leave your message after the tone please note if you are a business or a company of any description your call will not be returned please do not leave a message <laughs> play them at their own games yeah eventually no one's going to be talking to anyone are they because everyone's ignoring phones all the time um looking very much forward uh, on Sunday this week, a little trip up to my sister's because it is my nephew and his wife's uh, Barry uh, uh, baby's christening. His name's Harry. Let me see if I've got a picture of Harry. One minute. Harry the baby. Do you want to see pictures of babies? Of course you do. Let's have a look. <clears throat> Let's see if I can get a picture of Stacy. Uh, uh, uh. Stacy is my my um my nephew's wife's number. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, that's a nice picture. There's the both of them there. One second. Can I save that? Yes, we can. We can save that. There we are. Uh, picture of... Uh, get that for you. There we are. And there is a picture <clears throat> of Evie, who's on the left. 
Sorry, those of you just li listening, it's, it's um, you know, just, just pictures of babies here. Hang on, I'll just write down where this is. 115, Evie and Harry. There's a picture there of Evie who's on the left, who is now, e she's no longer Evie the baby. She's Evie the toddler. Yes, Evie the toddler is now running around all over the place, apparently. And uh, on the right is Harry the baby. Evie's wearing this uh, little pink number. She's got lots of curly blonde hair. Very pretty little girl. And e uh, Harry the baby on the right is going to have his uh, christening on Sunday. So I'm going up to uh, Lincolnshire uh, to be with them on uh, Sunday. So I'm very much looking forward to that. Going up to see my family. Yes. Lovely, lovely, lovely. I have to get a little christening present as well, I think. Good. Um... Oh, I've lost my bit of paper. Where did that go? Bit of paper gone. Got my things written down here to talk about. Oh, it's um, it's uh, it's email time. It's email time, boys and girls. Hello to uh, niece-in-law Stacy, who says you're looking radiant this morning, dear. I is it new moisturiser? No, I don't use it. I don't use anything on my face, really. Ronnie, my best mate, keeps telling me I should put something on my face. Like, you know, some sort of moisturiser or something like that. I don't, I don't, I can't be bothered with it all. To be honest, I can't be bothered with moisturiser or anything like that. Um, yes, Evie is watching. Thank you. Thank you, Stacey. Uh, am I looking radiant this morning? Hello to Millie in Minnesota, who emails in and says, Thanks for my birthday song last week. It made my day. And Sharon, Stacey and Tracy also sent birthday greetings on my actual birthday, which was very kind of all of them. You wanted to know what I got for my birthday. I got two different bracelets, a bit of money and a digital video recorder for my bedroom at the cottage, which is where I am at now. I'll be home on Tuesday now. So she'll, be, she'll be home now because um, she sent this last week. I think the hospital was able to sort out what was wrong with your feet. Well, no, um, Millie, they weren't because they... <laughs> They weren't there. They'd all gone on some bloody course somewhere. No one had told me. How rude is that? Thank you, Millie. Nice to hear from you. Um, hello to Miss Scarlet. Good morning, Miss Scarlet, who says, Hi, Chris. Long time no see. Miss Scarlet. Is it Scarlet from Central Station, I wonder? who was on Freedom FM with me. Scarlett says, long time no see. Hope all is well. Just letting you know, I was tuned in there for a bit, listening to you and Marge chatting about your dodgy feet. We'll listen again. Take care. Love, Scarlett. Dodgy old feet. Poor old me. It's all falling apart, isn't it? It's all terribly, terribly falling apart. Join in by email gang, Chris at United Kingdom Talk. .co.uk. Chris at United Kingdom Talk. .co.uk. Uh, ah, yes. Richard says he's going to be with me at about 12.30, and we'll probably be finished by then. We'll be finished chatting away by then, OK? Uh, hello to John in Croydon, who says, uh, on the subject of you uh, starting up a boy band, you were asking about um, what name should you call the boy band. He says the Zimmers. <laughs> As in Zimmer Frames, I think. How rude are you, John? Thank you. Um, Marge who we were just talking about earlier, we were talking about when do you watch the shows. Marge says, I watch the shows two times each. Talk about being a fan. I watch while live, and then again, because sometimes my attention um, deficit issues means I miss something and I catch it next time. So Marge actually watches the show twice. She watches it live and uh, the recording of it uh, later on. Let's have a say hello to Martin. Sorry, Matthew. I always call you Martin. I've been calling him Martin for years now. Matthew, who's in Canada, who says, Hello, Chris. It's your loyal viewer, Matt, from Canada. It's been a few months since I last wrote in, so I think it's due time you heard from me. If you've not already mentioned this in today's show, I'd like to start off by asking about your foot situation and what at all was found when you had it checked out. Well, uh, you, you heard it at the beginning of the show there. Um, I uh, 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 wasn't able to see a uh, doctor in the end because they, they weren't there. But I have gone to my recent, uh, uh, my, my normal doctor, uh, who's going to send me to a clinic, and I've got plantar... How do you say it again? Plantar fasciitis. 
um, uh, which is inf painful inflammatory process of the plantar fascia, the connective tissue on the sole of the foot. Uh, so so that, that appears to be what I have, okay? In response to your June the 22nd show, I wanted to answer your question by letting you know that I really enjoy the length of your shows and do watch them all the way through each week, as I always have. To be honest, the longer your shows are, the better, considering that the frequency of them dropped to one, one a week. Yes, we, we, we found um, uh, two a week was kind of eating into my week a little bit too much. I'm right, falling behind with things, so we had to knock one on the head. Plus, of course, it's summer, and you, you, know, you want to be out in the summer, although today it's raining, which is good news, actually. I'm glad it's raining today, because um, uh, uh, last yesterday night, last night, I um, before I went to work, I, um, sorry, before I went to work, I got some stuff for the garden because I've noticed there's quite a lot of moss and uh, weeds and some of the gardens not looking too clever at the moment. So I've got some of this stuff to spray on not spray on you kind of uh, sprinkle on and on on the garden and you, you, you put it around and then if it do if it doesn't rain then you're supposed to water this stuff in. And it hasn't rained for quite a, quite a while, maybe a couple of weeks. My water butts at the moment are completely empty. So I'm having to use the normal water, which means the meter is going round here. I'm having to pay for water to water the plants. Mind you, the hanging baskets are looking wonderful. I will get some... Oh, hang on, I've got pictures of the hanging baskets somewhere. Let me see if I can find that hanging basket picture. Do you want to see my hanging baskets? They're very good. Um images i'm getting better at doing this now where are we pick pics there it is there it is my hanging baskets you ready for this my hang hang on uh, picture of hanging basket there one minute and cut picture of hanging basket look at that those of you that are just listening to the show uh my hanging baskets are doing very well indeed we've got yellow and purple flowers there. Really, really nice hanging baskets I've got at the moment. Okay. Might have another picture here somewhere of them for you. Let me see. Uh, another picture of my hanging baskets. It's another one there. One minute. There we are. Another picture there. My hanging baskets. Look at those. I put Tom right on them. Tom Wright goes on the hung and baskets, and that does well. And the vegetable patch as well. The vegetable patch as well is doing very well. Um, vegetable patch, and there we are. Vegetable patch. We have uh, tomatoes and potatoes in pots on the left. You'll see lots of sticks. There's lots of sticks. Everything's growing up there. We've got mange trout or whatever it's called those like pea type things we've got peas we've got runner beans we've got carrots we've got parsnips and we've got onions okay a picture of the uh, various parts of the garden there all right cool isn't it eh so hopefully i'll uh, you know obviously i haven't picked anything yet i think some of the peas are actually ready to um the the mange trout things are whatever they're called are ready to pick now some of those are ready to pick so i shall be uh, hopefully consuming some of those at some point don't know about anything else carrots and i've not been successful with carrots so we'll see what happens there although this year um i bought them already in like you know plastic and um, things they'd already been germinated so we'll see how those go um, I wanted to wish you and Ron a great trip to Rome in a few months, in case you don't hear from me. And I can't wait to see some lovely pictures that I'm sure you will post from that trip. I wanted to take some time today to update you with my life here in Canada. First of all, this has been an incredibly busy year with my wedding coming up on October the 5th. I had no idea that there would be so many things to tend to in preparation of a wedding. It seems to be all the tiny bits and pieces that seem to add up and take lots of lots of both time and money, but lots to look forward to as I move on to the next exciting chapter of my life. You like a change. We like new chapters, new things happening. I'd like, I'd like another um, 
uh, thing to do, another, oh, what do you call it, another um, challenge. I would like another challenge, I would. I really wish there was a way I could beam you over and have you as a VIP guest at my wedding. What? I'm not VIP, Matthew. VIP me. And just put me with the, with the common ones. I'm fine there, dear. Please don't put me in a VIP area full of people who think they're really better than they are. The, 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 the world is full of them, dear. They are among us now. People who think they are better than they really are. We all know them. I'm not one of them. Just put me in the normal crowd, please. And to top it off, it would be brilliant if you could persuade Her Majesty the Queen to come along with you and make a special appearance. <laughs> I don't think she does weddings. Unless they're like royal ones. I can't see her making an appearance at your wedding. But I'm sure she would appreciate an invite anyway. Uh, the three of us could schedule tea time together and would be the perfect opportunity for you and I to avoid having to meet her for a large event, which would be ideal considering you and I both don't care for large parties. But there is me dreaming again. On another note, I was almost put to sleep on your last show when you sang Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. Oh, did you like it? Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, how I wonder... I won't, I won't do it now because I don't want you to fall asleep at the moment. Should you choose to sing another nursery rhyme in future, would you consider doing it at the end so I'm not tempted to sleep and miss part of the show? <laughs> Perhaps you could record that now, um, Matthew. You could record that now, um, the, the Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, and perhaps play it for any little babies that you might be having at some point. Might help send them to sleep. Uh, I realise I'm being cheeky today, but thanks very much in advance. <laughs> By the way, I do fully support you having your own musical YouTube channel, consisting if you sing both nursery rhymes as well as the occasional Barry Manilow tune. You can never have enough Barry Manilow. In fact, uh, do take a... Uh, we have our Barry Manilow calendar behind me there. And, of course, the picture will change on the next show. Yes, when we, when we forward it another page for another picture of Barry. I must say I'm quite jealous about the fact that you have access to pre-cut onions in your supermarkets and hoping that the shops in Canada will embrace this idea as I'm sure there are lots of people like myself who prefer not to open their tear ducts like a facet uh, faucet every time they cut onions, dear. Oh, yeah, we, we have bags of onions. And you can get them in weight choice. I don't know if it's Sainsbury's do them. But you can get bags of onions in uh, Waitrose now. You don't have to cut them or anything. Just open the bag and pour them in. How fantastic is that? Eh? Fagash Leal says, Mange trout, fishy peas managed. Mange too is how you pronounce them. What? Mange too? Is it? <laughs> mange too. I don't know what they're called. But they're like peas... But you don't let the peas grow too much inside, and and you cut up the whole thing and eat it, rather than just you you, you don't shell them. You take the thing off the plant and eat it or cook it, as it is with its shell. Is it marsh? I don't know what they're called. In other big happenings, we are about to celebrate Canada. Canada Day here on July the 1st, make, marking the 146 years that Canada has been a country which is quite lovely. Oh, so what um, celebrations are you... Would a Queen be coming over for that one? Or any other royal family? I expect uh, you'll, you'll get a visit. In... Um, in other big uh, Canada, speaking of Canada, I'm still quite amazed that you have Canada geese over there. Oh yes, we, we do have Canada geese. Yes, we have Canada geese. When I first saw your upload, uh, oh, you must have been watching. I do have Facebook as well, boys and girls. If you want to join us on Facebook, my username there is Chris Reardon UK. Right, so that's facebook.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK. When I first saw your upload, I thought maybe you were in North America, as that's the only place I've seen them before. Oh, no, we get Canada geese here. They fly over sometimes. A little family that lives in Wokenham that, you, that you've obviously seen. There are little films uh, that are posted on, on the Facebook there. I wanted to also respond to your June the 15th show. 
for you are asking us to write in about our paranormal experiences. <clears throat> and my story is that when I was five years old, when I saw what I can only describe as a floating, visible ghost in my bedroom that I can still clearly recall to this day, he would be best described as a church minister wearing a black suit and a cross on a small necklace, and I saw him generally shortly after my parents would tuck me in for bedtime. And I felt very comforted by him and had a generally warm sense of security in my soul. I'm very thankful that I've never had a negative paranormal experience. Finally today, I just wanted to sincerely thank you for all the time you take out of your week to spend with us. It reminds you that me and so many others appreciate what you do. Thank you very much, uh, Matthew. It's kind of you to say that. I'm so glad that Richard um, from Global Radio talked you into doing shows again last year because by doing that you have returned that slice of happiness to your loyal listeners and viewers as always Chris I have you in my thoughts and prayers each and every day sincerely Matt from Canada what well, a lovely email there Matt really nice email and thank you very much for sending that in um, the bit where you were five years old and you saw what can describe as a floating visible ghost. I had that. Um, I was a bit older than you, probably about 10. And I remember on possibly three or four occasions, it happened more than once. And we had a, a, a three bedroomed uh, flat, Mason it was, in Roehampton. And I remember on three or four occasions waking up. I don't know what the time was. There was no clock in the room or anything like that because mum would wake us up for uh, uh, school or whatever it was at the time. And I remember seeing mum and dad walking through my room and they weren't dead at the time. They were alive. Walking through my room hand in hand and walking through the wall. I saw this a few times. Interesting, isn't it? They weren't dead. And yet there was my paranormal experience there, which, which kind of tells me that there is more, more to, to us than, than me just sitting here now. There must be more spirit in me or something like that. And I saw their spirits walk through my bedroom and through the wall and they were holding hands mum and dad it was a lovely thing really really nice thing i wonder if anyone else has had an experience about that like that do let us know on the email chris at united kingdom talk dot co dot uk chris at united kingdom talk dot co dot uk all right, boys and girls, well, I think we're just about uh, it today. Oh, I've got to tell you, I, do you know, um, each and every year I change my sheets, summertime and wintertime. I mean, obviously, I change them once a week anyway. But I change them from flannelette to normal to cotton. I haven't yet changed my... F That's how bad the weather has been here. I still haven't changed my sheets from flannelette to cotton because it hasn't been warm enough. Is that the same for you? Do you, do you have just, do you have lots of different sheets? I have flannelette ones for the winter, an autumn and winter, and normal ones for the summer. I still haven't changed my sheets from flannelette to normal cotton sheets because it's just not been warm enough. It's awful. It's all right. You know, it's not freezing cold or anything like that. But, uh, I mean, it's nothing to write home about, really, the weather here in the UK. It's raining today. Uh, Fagas Leo says um one of the best things i did was get an answer machine on the home phone most companies just hang up well yeah i mean you can but then you still see them see still, the phone still rings do you know what i mean you have to go over to it and see who it is before you decide whether or not to take the blooming call didn't you well i don't want to do that i don't want them to ring in the first place don't ring my phone so i've changed the number i will never ever put that phone number down on a form they can, I will only put my mobile number on forms now because they bring you up, don't they? They get on my nerves. Um, she said, what a wonderful picture that was of the two children that you showed earlier on. Yeah, thank you. 
yeah i thought it was a nice picture as well uh is that it i think that's going to be it today I know they've got um, uh, Glastonbury. Is it Glastonbury this week? This is a very large music event here in the UK. Lots of people go there. Have a look on the internet about that Glastonbury Music Festival. We'll tell you all about it. And, I, you know, I don't know how people can go to music festivals in in fields and all that. Oh, my. It must be just dirty and rainy. And the toilets, because they're like those temporary toilets, aren't they? Oh, my God. I just couldn't use one. How awful. They'd just be filled up with, you know... Oh. I, I, <laughs> I could not go to one of those events, I'm afraid. Absolutely not. Glastonbury or anything like that. And then uh, th th I, I gather that um, a lot of stuff gets stolen as well from these places. Hi. Oh, we just got a call coming in. Good morning. Who's that? Oh, hang on. Hi. Hi. Um, can I speak to Antonio, oh, please? I've got my earphone in. <laughs> Hello. Who's that? I'm just ringing up regarding Good morning. The, uh, the fridge at flat 143 Hello. Lexham Gardens. Hello. Are you there? Hi. Can you hear me? Oh, hang on. I can't hear you again, can I? I'll ring you back. Hang on. Yeah. Nearly got you. Yeah, I'm just ringing up about the fridge at Lexham Gardens. The what? The fridge at Lexham Gardens. Yeah, what's that about then? Do, do you live at Lexham Gardens? Oh, I think you got the wrong wrong address. Mate. Oh, sorry, mate. All right, not to All worry. Right, bye bye. <laughs> <laughs> A wrong number on Skype. How does that happen? <laughs> oh, it's just hopeless, isn't it? Here I am sitting here telling you about I get fed up with people ringing up. And then all of a sudden, someone's trying to sell me a fridge. Lexham Gardens. Where the hell is that? Don't even know. Oh, well, not to worry. Now, what was I telling you? Oh, yeah, Glastonbury. Couldn't do that. All that dirt and everything like that. Oh, it must be just awful. And people, apparently, um, it's quite a, a, a lot of stuff gets stolen at these dudes. Because what happens, you know, they all turn up in tents. Nice people turn up in tents and things like that. And they go and watch that and they leave all the stuff in their tents. You know, mobile phones and, I don't know, cameras, expensive computers probably, laptops. It's all left in their tents. Of course, they go and, and see all the um. They go and see all the uh, 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 acts, that, all the bands and what have you that are playing. They come back. Oh, my stuff's gone. More, well, more for you for leaving it in there. Did you really think no one was going to nick that? It's stupid. Terry says, talk about random calls and they invade your show. <laughs> Wasn't you, Terry? Was it ringing an anonymous number? Hey. Eh? Anyway, ten past twelve. 10 past 12, Friday the um, 28th of June, 2013. Time for me to go, boys and girls. Thank you very much for joining us today. Um, I'll see you again live here next Friday at 10.30 UK time. If you're watching and listening to a recording of the show and you'd like to join us live next Friday, then you can do so. You'll find the information at the top by going to United Kingdom Talk. Dot co dot uk just go to the first post down uh which will be friday the 28th of june okay just go to the first post down and it will tell you how you can join us live next friday okay once again go to united kingdom talk dot co dot uk the email address if you'd like to join in anything we've been talking about or indeed anything at all perhaps you're a brand new viewer or listener then it'd be lovely to hear from you tell us where you are and what you're doing also anyone who's joined us by facebook okay anyone who's joined us because they saw the little facebook advertisement please let us know that you found me by um uh, by the advert okay the email address chris at united kingdom talk dot co dot uk you have a lovely weekend i'll see you next friday bye bye now